Section 45 of Library of the World's Best Literature, Ancient and Modern, Volume 2. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Bob Gonzalez. Library of the World's Best Literature, Ancient and Modern, Volume 2. Section 45. Selected Poems by Edwin Arnold. The Faithfulness of Yudish Thira. From The Great Journey in the Mahabharata. Thenceforth alone the long-armed monarch strode, not looking back, nay, not for Bhima's sake, but walking with his face set for the mount, and the hound followed him, only the hound. After the deathly sands, the mount, and lo, Chakra shone forth, the god, Filling the earth and heavens with thunder of his chariot wheels. Ascend, he said, with me, Pritha's great son. But Yudish Thira answered, sore at heart, For those his kinfolk, fallen on the way. O thousand-eyed, O lord of all the gods, Give that my brothers come with me, who fell. Not without them is Swarga sweet to me. She, too, the dear and kind and queenly, She whose perfect virtue paradise must crown, Grant her to come with us, dost thou grant this? The god replied, In heaven thou shalt see thy kinsmen and the queen. These will attain, and Krishna. Grieve no longer for thy dead, thou chief of men. Their mortal covering stripped, these have their places, but to thee the gods allot an unknown grace. Thou shalt go up, living and in thy form, to the immortal homes. But the king answered, O thou wisest one, who knowst what was and is and is to be, still one more grace. This hound hath ate with me, followed me, loved me. Must I leave him now? Monarch, spake Indra, Thou art now as we, deathless, divine. Thou art become a god, glory and power and gifts celestial, and all the joys of heaven are thine for I. What hath a beast with thee? Leave here thy hound. Yet Yudhishthira answered, O most high, O thousand-eyed and wisest, can it be that one exalted should seem pitiless? Nay, let me lose such glory. For its sake I cannot leave one living thing I loved. Then sternly Indra spake, He is unclean, and into Swarga such shall enter not. The Krotavasha's wrath destroys the fruits of sacrifice if dogs defile the fire. Bethink thee, Dharma Raj, quit now this beast. That which is seemly is not hard of heart. Still, he replied, "'Tis written that to spurn a suppliant equals in offence to slay a twice-born. Wherefore not for Swarga's bliss quit I, Mahendra, this poor clinging dog, so without any hope or friend save me, so wistful, fawning for my faithfulness, so agonized to die, unless I help, who among men was called steadfast and just, quoth Indra, nay, the altar flame is foul where a dog passeth. Angry angels sweep the ascending smoke aside, and all the fruits of offering, and the merit of the prayer of him whom a hound toucheth. Leave it here. He that will enter heaven must enter pure. Why didst thou quit thy brethren on the way, and Krishna, and the dear-loved Draupadi, attaining firm and glorious to this mount through perfect deeds, to linger for a brute? Hath Yudish Thira vanquished self to melt with one poor passion at the door of bliss? Stayst thou for this who didst not stay for them, Drapadi, Bhima? But the king yet spake. Tis known that none can hurt or help the dead. They, the delightful ones who sank and died, following my footsteps, could not live again though I had turned. Therefore I did not turn but could help profit i had stayed to help there be four sins o chakra grievous sins the first is making suppliants despair the second is to slay a nursing wife the third is spoiling brahman's goods by force 
the fourth is injuring an ancient friend these four i deem not direr than the crime if one in coming forth from woe to weal abandon any meanest comrade then straight as he spake brightly great indra smiled vanished the hound and in its stead stood there the lord of death and justice dharma's self sweet were the words which fell from those dread lips precious the lovely praise o thou true king thou that dost bring to harvest the good seed of pandu's righteousness thou that hath ruth as he before on all which lives o son i tried thee in the dwaita wood what time they smote thy brothers bringing water then thou prayedst for nakula's life tender and just nor bhima's nor arjuna's true to both to madri as to kunti to both queens hear thou my word because thou didst not mount this car divine lest the poor hound be shent who looked to thee lo there is none in heaven shall sit above thee king bharata's son enter thou now to the eternal joys living and in thy form justice and love welcome thee monarch thou shalt throne with us he and she she is dead they said to him come away kiss her and leave her thy love is clay they smoothed her tresses of dark brown hair on her forehead of stone they laid it fair over her eyes that gazed too much they drew the lids with a gentle touch with a tender touch they closed up well the sweet thin lips that had secrets to tell about her brows and beautiful face they tied her veil and her marriage lace and drew on her white feet her white silk shoes which were the whitest no eye could choose and over her bosom they crossed her hands come away they said god understands and there was silence and nothing there but silence and scents of eglantere and jasmine and roses and rosemary and they said as a lady should lie lies she and they held their breath till they left the room with a shudder to glance at its stillness and gloom but he who loved her too well to dread the sweet the stately the beautiful dead he lit his lamp and took the key and turned it alone again he and she he and she but she would not speak though he kissed in the old place the quiet cheek he and she yet she would not smile though he called her the name she loved erewhile he and she still she did not move to any passionate whisper of love then he said cold lips and breasts without breath is there no voice no language of death dumb to the ear and still to the sense but to heart and to soul distinct intense see now i will listen with soul not ear what was the secret of dying dear was it the infinite wonder of all that you ever could let life's flower fall or was it a greater marvel to feel the perfect calm or the agony steal was the miracle greater to find how deep beyond all dreams sank downward that sleep did life roll back its record dear and show as they say it does past things clear and was it the innermost heart of the bliss to find out so what a wisdom love is o oh, perfect dead o oh, dead most dear i hold the breath of my soul to hear i listen as deep as to horrible hell as high as to heaven and you do not tell there must be pleasure in dying sweet to make you so placid from head to feet i would tell you darling if i were dead and twere your hot tears upon my brow shed i would say though the angel of death had laid his sword on my lips to keep it unsaid you should not ask vainly with streaming eyes which of all deaths was the chiefest surprise the very strangest and suddenest thing of all the surprises that dying must bring ah foolish world o most kind dead though he told me who will believe it was said who will believe that he heard her say with the sweet soft voice in the dear old way the utmost wonder is this i hear and see you and love you and kiss you dear and am your angel who was your bride and know that though dead i have never died after death from pearls of the faith 
he made life and he takes it but instead gives more praise the restorer al muhid he who died at azan sends this to comfort faithful friends faithful friends it lies i know pale and white and cold as snow and ye say abdullah's dead weeping at my feet and head i can see your falling tears i can hear your cries and prayers yet i smile and whisper this i am not that thing you kiss cease your tears and let it lie it was mine it is not i sweet friends what the women lave for its last bed in the grave is a tent which i am quitting is a garment no more fitting is a cage from which at last like a hawk my soul hath passed love the inmate not the room the wearer not the garb the plume of the falcon not the bars which kept him from the splendid stars loving friends be wise and dry straightway every weeping eye what ye lift upon the bier is not worth a wistful tear tis an empty sea-shell one out of which the pearl is gone the shell is broken it lies there the pearl the all the soul is here tis an earthen jar whose lid allah sealed the while it hid that treasure of his treasury a mind which loved him let it lie let the shard be earth's once more since the gold shines in his store allah muhid allah most good now thy grace is understood now my heart no longer wonders what al barsak is which sunders life from death and death from heaven nor the paradises seven which the happy dead inherit nor those birds which bear each spirit toward the throne green birds and white radiant glorious swift their flight now the long long darkness ends yet ye wail my foolish friends while the man whom ye call dead in unbroken bliss instead lives and loves you lost tis true by any light which shines for you but in light ye cannot see of unfulfilled felicity and enlarging paradise lives the life that never dies farewell friends yet not farewell where i am ye too shall dwell i am gone before your face a heart beats time a gray ant's pace when ye come where i have stepped ye will marvel why ye wept ye will know by true love taught that here is all and there is naught weep a while if ye are fain sunshine still must follow rain only not at death for death now i see is that first breath which our souls draw when we enter life that is of all life centre know ye allah's law is love viewed from allah's throne above be ye firm of trust and come faithful onward to your home la allah illa allah yea muhid restorer sovereign say he who died at azan gave this to those that made his grave solomon and the ant from pearls of the faith say al rahin call him compassionate for he is pitiful to small and great tis written that the serving angels stand beside god's throne ten myriads on each hand waiting with wings outstretched and watchful eyes to do their master's heavenly embassies quicker than thought his high commands they read swifter than light to execute them speed bearing the word of power from star to star some hither and some thither near and far and unto these naught is too high or low too mean or mighty if he wills it so neither is any creature great or small beyond his pity which embraceth all because his eye beholdeth all which are sees without search and counteth without care nor lies the babe nearer the nursing place than allah's smallest child to allah's grace nor any ocean rolls so vast that he forgets one wave of all that restless sea thus it is written and moreover told how gabriel watching by the gates of gold 
heard from the voice ineffable this word of twofold mandate uttered by the lord go earthward pass where solomon hath made his pleasure house and sitteth there arrayed goodly and splendid whom i crowned the king for at this hour my servant doth a thing unfitting out of nisibis there came a thousand steeds with nostrils all aflame and limbs of swiftness prizes of the fight lo these are led for solomon's delight before the palace where he gazeth now filling his heart with pride at that brave show so taken with the snorting and the tramp of his war-horses that our silver lamp of eve is swung in vain our warning sun will sink before his sunset prayers begun so shall the people say this king our lord loves more the long-maned trophies of his sword than the remembrance of his god go in save thou my faithful servant from such sin also upon the slope of arafat beneath a lote tree which is fallen flat toileth a yellow ant who carrieth home food for her nest but so far hath she come her worn feet fail and she will perish caught in the falling rain but thou make the way naught and help her to her people in the cleft of the black rock silently gabriel left the presence and prevented the king's sin and halp the little ant at entering in o thou whose love is wide and great we praise thee the compassionate the afternoon from pearls of the faith he is sufficient and he makes suffice praise thus again thy lord mighty and wise god is enough thou who in hope and fear toilest through desert sands of life sore tried climb trustful over death's black ridge for near the bright wells shine thou wilt be satisfied god doth suffice o thou the patient one who puttest faith in him and none beside bear yet thy load under the setting sun the glad tents gleam thou wilt be satisfied by god's gold afternoon peace ye shall have man is in loss except he live aright and help his fellow to be firm and brave faithful and patient then the restful night al mugni best rewarder we endure putting our trust in thee the trumpet from pearls of the faith magnify him al kayum and so call the self-subsisting god who judgeth all when the trumpet shall sound on that day the wicked slow gathering shall say is it long we have lain in our graves for it seems as an hour then will israfil call them to judgment and none shall have power to turn aside this way or that and their voices will sink to silence except for the sounding of a noise like the noise on the brink of the sea when its stones are dragged with a clatter and hiss down the shore in the wild breaker's roar the sound of their woe shall be this then they who denied that he liveth eternal self-made shall call to the mountains to crush them amazed and afraid thou self-subsistent living lord thy grace against that day afford envoy to the light of asia ah blessed lord o high deliverer forgive this feeble script which doth thee wrong measuring with little wit thy lofty love ah lover brother guide lamp of the law i take my refuge in thy name and thee i take my refuge in thy law of god i take my refuge in thy order om the dew is on the lotus rise great sun and lift my leaf and mix me with the wave om mani padme om the sunrise comes the dewdrop slips into the shining sea from harper's monthly grishma or the season of heat translated from kalidasa's ritu sanhara with fierce noons beaming moons of glory gleaming full conduits streaming where fair bathers lie with sunsets splendid when the strong day ended melts into peace like a tired lover's sigh so cometh summer nigh 
and nights of ebon blackness laced with lustres from starry clusters courts of calm retreat where wan rills warble over glistening marble cold jewels and the sandal moist and sweet these for the time are meet of suchi dear one of the bright days bringing love songs for singing which all hearts enthrall wine cups that sparkle at the lips of lovers odors and pleasures in the palace hall in suchi these befall for then with wide hips richly girt and bosoms fragrant with blossoms and with pearl strings gay their new laved hair unbound and spreading round faint scents the palace maids in tender play the ardent heats allay of princely playmates through the gates their feet with lack dye rosy and neat and anklets ringing in music trip along echoing the song of wild swans all men's hearts by subtle singing to kama's service bringing for who their sandals scented breasts perceiving their white pearls weaving with the saffron stars girdles and diadems their gold and gems linked upon waist and thigh in love's soft snares is not caught unawares then lay they by their robes no longer light for the warm midnight and their beauty cover with woven veil too airy to conceal its dew-pearled softness so with youth clad over each seeks her eager lover and sweet airs winnowed from the sandal fans faint balm that nests between those gem-bound breasts voices of stream and bird and clear notes heard from vena strings amid the song's unrests wake passion with light jests and sidelong glances and coy smiles and dances each maid enhances newly sprung delight quick leaps the fire of love's divine desire so kindled in the season when the night with broadest moons is bright till on the silvered terraces sleep sunken with love's draughts drunken those close lovers lie and all for sorrow there shall come to-morrow the moon who watched them pales in the gray sky while the still night doth die then breaks the fierce day the whirling dust is driven o'er earth and heaven until the sun-scorched plain its road scarce shows for dazzling heat to those who far from home and love journey in pain longing to rest again panting and parched with muzzles dry and burning for cool streams yearning herds of antelope haste where the brassy sky banked black and high hath clouded promise there will be they hope water beyond the tope sick with the glare his hooded terrors failing his slow coils trailing o'er the fiery dust the cobra glides to nighest shade and hides his head beneath the peacock's train he must his ancient foemen trust the purple pea-fowl wholly overmastered by the red morning droop with weary cries no stroke they make to slay that gliding snake who creeps for shelter underneath the eyes of their spread jewelries the jungle lord the kingly tiger prowling for fierce thirst howling orbs astare and red sees without heed the elephants pass by him lolls his lank tongue and hangs his bloody head his mighty forces fled nor heed the elephants that tiger plucking green leaves and sucking with a dry trunk dew tormented by the blazing day they wander and nowhere finding water still renew their search a woeful crew with restless snout rooting the dark morasses where reeds and grasses on the soft slime grow the wild boars grunting ill-content and anger dig lairs to shield them from the torturing glow deep deep as they can go the frog for misery of his pool departing neath that flame darting ball and waters drained down to their mud crawls croaking forth 
to cower under the black snake's coils where there is gained a little shade and strained to patience by such heat scorching the jewel gleaming so cruel on his venomous head that worm whose tongue as the blast burns along licks it for coolness all discomfited strikes not his strange friend dead the pool with tender growing cups of lotus once sprightly blowing hath no blossoms more its fish are dead its fearful cranes are fled and crowding elephants its flowery shore tramp to a miry floor with foam strings roping from his jowls and dropping from dried drawn lips horns laid aback and eyes mad with the drouth and thirst tormented mouth down thundering from his mountain cavern flies the bison in wild wise questing a water channel bare and scrannel the trees droop where the crows sit in a row with beaks agape the hot baboon and ape climb chattering to the bush the buffalo bellows and locusts go choking the wells far o'er the hills and dells wanders the affrighted eye beholding blasted the pleasant grass the forest's leafy mass wilted its waters waned its grace exhausted its creatures wasted then leaps to view blood-red and bright of hue as blooms sprung new on the kasumba tree the wild fire's tongue fanned by the wind and flung furiously forth the palms canes breaks you see wrapped in one agony of lurid death the conflagration driven in fiery leaven roars from jungle caves hisses and blusters through the bamboo clusters crackles across the curling grass and drives into the river waves the forest folk dreadful that flame to see coiled from the cotton tree a snake of gold violently break from root and trunk to take the bending boughs and leaves in deadly hold then passing to enfold new spoils in herds elephants jackals pards for anguish of such fate their enmity laying aside burst for the river wide which flows between fair isles in company as friends they madly flee but thee my best beloved may suchi visit fair with songs of secret waters cooling the quiet air under blue buds of lotus beds and patalas which shed fragrance and balm while moonlight weaves over thy happy head its silvery veil so nights and days of summer pass for thee amid the pleasure palaces with love and melody end of section 45 recording by bob gonzales tampa florida